from WROC. This is News 8 at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. This back to school season is different for some area teenagers. The Center for Youth says it's seeing a spike in homeless young people this school year. The group says the cost of living is to blame. Sierra Putman has more on this story. She joins us now live in the newsroom. Sierra? Well, Tina, the Center for Youth says this added stress is causing conflict in area homes, forcing some young people to turn to the center for help. Back to school is usually an exciting time, a chance for new beginnings. Usually families are calm and peaceful and joyful and getting ready to go back to school. This year, that's not the case for some teens. I think the last time we saw a spike like this was back probably in 2009, right at the height of the whole recession. Josh Jinx with the Center for Youth says 10 of their 13 beds are full already. Nine of those kids came looking for help in just the last week. The center's executive director believes rising prices for gas, food, and possibly even school supplies are to blame. We know that our families who are already very fragile, when they're faced with economic challenges, things get even worse. The center tries to open the kids to new possibilities by providing food and a place to stay. This time of year, it also gets them new school supplies and clothes. We know that for many kids, the way you start the school year really indicates success later. So it's our job to make sure they start on the right foot. It's a huge undertaking. Sometimes the center has to make tough decisions. Last year, in a six-month period, they had to turn away 200 kids. Many of them end up out here on the streets. We've had to turn young people away. It's heartbreaking. When you turn a 12 or 13 year old away, you know there's no place else for them to go in our community. This is a trend that may continue through the school year. More than likely, we're going to gear up for another busy fall. And the Center for Youth takes in kids between the ages of 12 to 18. It's asking area families already out doing their own back to school shopping to pick up some extra supplies to donate to its teens if they can. Sierra Putman, News 8. All right, Sierra, thank you. Moms and dads are taking advantage of last minute back to school sales this weekend. It's only a few days before many kids head back to the classroom. We caught up with some parents outside of the Arondequoit Target today. They're trying to find some of the best deals, despite rising prices for school supplies. Parents tell us they aren't just looking for one specific item. So some are gra randomly grab uniform tops, then the bottoms, then the markers, then the crayons, the paper. Just get everything separate times. Well, instead of just going to one place, I have to shop around, obviously, and look at ads. And I shop on the Internet a lot, too, and catalogs, you know, they come in, you know, look for the best sale prices. Many parents expect to spend more than $300 on new school supplies and clothing. That's according to a survey from the National Retail Federation. The Federation says after the winter holidays, this is one of the busiest shopping seasons of the year. Well, the pain at the pump is in full swing this Labor Day weekend. And if you're traveling, you've probably noticed that New York has some of the most expensive gas in the nation. The state's average now tops $4 a gallon. That's according to AAA. New York City residents, they pay the most. Their gallon is $4.10. It's not much less here in Rochester at $3.92. That price is up $0.05 cents from last week. Bringing you up to speed now, a man is recovering from injuries after police say he was hit by a car. Officers got that call around midnight at the intersection of West Main and Hennigan Street in Rochester. Police say the victim stepped into the road and was hit. No charges have been filed. Two and a half hours later, two women were hurt when their car went into a Rochester building. Police say it happened around 2.30 near the Elite Bar and Grill on West Main Street. The driver lost control of the car, hit a tree, and then went backwards into the building. Both men were taken to Strong Hospital. They had non-life-threatening injuries. News 8 is your local election headquarters. President Obama is hitting key swing states on his way to Charlotte for the Democratic National Convention. Meanwhile, in Charlotte, organizers are setting up and security is tight ahead of Tuesday's opening day. Danielle Nottingham is in Charlotte tonight with more. Police are patrolling the streets and helicopters are hovering over Charlotte. The city is getting ready for Tuesday, opening day of the Democratic National Convention. More than 35,000 people are expected in town. Organizers say security will be tight. 
There seems to be a police at uh, every block. Jennifer Thompson was not worried about bringing her sons downtown. He was. I wasn't so much because I knew they were gonna, there was going to be plenty of cops. Police escorted hundreds of demonstrators protesting big banks through Charlotte's business district Sunday. The city is using a $50 million federal grant to help cover the cost of keeping order. That includes a 100 square block security zone around the convention hall. President Obama is making his way to Charlotte through key swing states. Hello, Colorado! Sunday, he stopped at the University of Colorado. If you're willing to vote for me in November, we will win Boulder and we will win Colorado. We will win this election. Mitt Romney went to church in New Hampshire Sunday. His advisors say President Obama will have to account for the struggling economy. I think next week in Charlotte, uh, the president needs to explain why he didn't do what he said he was going to do. The president says he'll lay out a plan for how to move the country forward when he accepts his party's nomination on Thursday. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Charlotte, North Carolina. The Democratic National Convention kicks off in North Carolina on Tuesday. We're following along every step of the way. We'll have live reports throughout the week here on News 8 and also on our sister station, Fox Rochester. President Obama is set to accept the Democratic Party's nomination on Thursday, September 6th. If you're looking for something to do on your Labor Day holiday, how about a parade? The city of Rochester's annual Labor Day parade will take place tomorrow on the holiday. The parade begins at the intersection of East Avenue and Alexander Street at 11 o'clock. The parade is traditionally one of the largest in Rochester. In 2011, more than 40 labor unions participated in the parade, totaling about 3,000 members. There are also several bands and cars that will be part of that parade tomorrow. We're following a developing story for you tonight about a kitten who made a dangerous trip hundreds of miles to Rochester on top of a car's gas tank. The cat, now nicknamed Connecticut, is recovering at Lollipop Farm. A family was driving from Connecticut to drop their son off at RIT when they heard a strange noise. After a six-hour ordeal, a Rochester mechanic made the discovery. Lollipop plans to put the kitten up for adoption as soon as it gains some weight.